Yes, sir. Awesome. Well, yep. uh, I think we should probably just get started then. Um, and if uh, people come in, we will uh, we will uh, welcome them. So uh, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, the just a reminder: uh, these meetings are recorded. Um, I post them on YouTube for people who couldn't be here. Um, if that's a concern for anyone, uh, please let me know now or or after the meeting. Um, and I uh, appreciate the great turnout. The the um, the change in day uh, was uh, kind of last minute, but uh, it was important because we have some important stuff to discuss. So uh, we will uh, go forward uh, with that. So thanks everyone for joining. Uh, more or less standard agenda. Um, with uh, I don't think there's anybody new here, so we don't need to do any introductions. Uh, board farm status. I don't have anything on my end. Um, I have not been able to work on this at all this week uh, with the OpenWRT Summit going on. I'm uh, getting the getting the things ready to uh, send send out the um, the information for that and uh, working all that out. So nothing there. Uh, has anybody else done anything with board farm? I don't think there's anybody on the call that does board farm stuff usually. So okay. Um, <clears throat> the funding OpenWRT projects, uh, Felix's has been approved and we are start, uh, we'll be starting, uh, I'm, the only thing I'm waiting on is his, is we need to get, uh, signatures from, uh, the Embed, um, and Art, uh, Embed's the company that Felix works for, but it's, it's a formality at this point. Um. So that'll be moving forward, and I, I posted their proposal that was accepted. Um, that's on the um, the OpenWRT TR069 uh, base camp. So if anyone wants to review that to just you know make sure they understand what Fields is going to do and what the schedule is, um, that's there. Uh, any questions about that? Oh, well, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Luca, do you have any, any sort of update um, that you'd like to summarize on um, what you're doing? Yeah, so, so basically uh, we did the initial part for the uh, UC uh, that was defined in Statement of Work uh, in a nutshell with regard to anonymous sections and uh, how it makes um, everybody's life hard when it comes to remote management protocols. So uh, we did the initial work and now is a question of how to finalize it. And uh, earlier this week, I've sent email to Felix and uh, I've kept Eric in the loop, after which Eric told me that it would be good that uh, it is on Basecamp. And uh, basically, I put the discussion on Basecamp and we'll use Basecamp for further uh communication i think that's most appropriate given the broad wide uh, number of people involved so uh, in a nutshell i'm waiting on uh, felix's feedback there or anybody else's if uh, they have it and uh, i'm we are also waiting for some final steps with regards to getting uh, software stack from uh, other companies uh, that we will integrate into OpenWRT. And uh, I think more or less with everybody on this call, I think uh, it's already known fact, but uh, uh, like you know, we have a small budget only to implement uh, the first stack. And depending on uh, how much time is left, etc., there was some interest in uh, integrating some other stacks so at this point we are just waiting for uh, i guess some legal uh, stuff from the companies in order to get the source code and we can kick off the work so so far everything is in order and going well to and, and to clarify we, we are extending going to extend the uh the budget for the second stack to stack as well so yeah um so oh. uh par part of the part of this has been a little difficult with the and i you know i think luca would agree is that it, 
not entirely knowing how long the integration is going to take. Um, yeah, and it's it's that's why uh, we could uh, say that uh, description of our work was pretty uh, vague in the in the second part, but that was deliberately like that because we have been uh, working as a company in this area for three almost four years and uh, have some experience how it usually works out so based on that uh, we written it wake so we can help in any area rather than just now specifying we will do this this and this because we don't know uh, what specific work is ahead of us so uh, it can be a lot of work it can be a small amount of work in any case uh, when we start doing this um we can even have more active uh, discussions with the community i don't know whether uh, this would be interesting from a marketing perspective or uh, from any other new company who would like to join purple so they can see like okay this is how they approach to this specific technical problem this is what they did first uh when they run into this problem they try to solve it using these steps uh and the result of this work is available here and here um that's just a thought um but yeah could be interesting i think that that generally sounds good i mean did you i'm not sure if i totally understand uh you know when you say uh discuss it are, are you talking about on like a base camp, a mailing list, or like how exactly were you thinking of this? <clears throat> okay, so this is uh, first time we will do integration for uh, some specific step. Okay, mm -hmm. so from my perspective, the process is pretty clear. So we will receive a source code, we will uh, take a look at this source code, we will try to compile it, we will try to make OpenWRT package. Uh, after that, uh, we will look more deeply into this source code and integrate it the uh, best way possible into OpenWRT. So this is a process. Uh, and in this process, we know which steps to take. So this is uh, some specific know-how, which mm -hmm. could be interesting um, maybe to, to have more extensively documented and oh, later yeah. in the future if somebody comes and says okay uh so we have some other software we would like to open source for example I don't know. okay our, no okay. our yeah custom proprietary wi-fi driver so um they have a you know more proper documentation how we did it uh, in this project etc Oh no, I, that that I think is a great idea. That that's a perfect idea. I think, in fact, that that would be, that would do, that would really fit um, fit what we're looking for. Um, we can talk. Um, s oh, just just one note, Matteo speaking. Uh, from my understanding, uh, I, I'm perfectly in line with Luca's steps to be done. Mm -hmm. I think that sounds quite good, quite reasonable. Uh, what he, he was saying and complaining for sure is uh, without having a look at the code to be integrated, it would be hard from his point of view to understand what is the, the real work to be done. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it, in my understanding, he didn't have the chance yet to have a look at uh, some code. So, um, well, from ADB point of view, uh, I followed the discussion between Art, Pasquale, and, uh, and, uh, and you, Eric, regarding the funding on a second uh, integration. So, mm -hmm. given that we are now in the position of uh, proposing the uh, initial step of showing up our TR-69, and configuration manager code to the uh, base camp group initially okay. as a first step mm -hmm. uh, in order to give exactly this view to Luca. So 
start look at the code. Uh, mm -hmm. We are already preparing, uh, well, our code is already on GitLab, uh, and we are already preparing it in a way that it, it's included as OpenWRT packages, because in fact, our stack is OpenWRT based, so it's not much effort from our side. And we will open it to the member of uh, the Basecamp group with mm -hmm. this exact purpose. So looking at the code, giving Luca the idea on how to integrate it. Then we will probably talk just after about the license and license scheme to be applied uh, for opening up to the entire open source community. Mm -hmm. But that's probably a second step or another, another step. It doesn't prevent anything from our side on opening up to the uh, Basecamp members. All right. That, that's that's great. That's that would so be our, perfect. Our idea is just to uh, um, sharing the uh, GitLab project link and asking for the uh, accounts to be added to the private group that has been created by ADB on GitLab for sharing this code initially to our members. All right. I think that's that's a great step. I think that would that'd be perfect. Uh, definitely okay with me. Um, I just like... Uh, okay, so we as uh, Sartura are not uh, choosing the stack. Um, and uh, let's say we are somehow in this position where uh, we got... Uh, get asked around often uh, which stack uh, we will do first and how much it will take and so on. So from from my side, I can say that uh, we always do good work. And um, in this specific case, uh, of course, since Purple is paying, uh, we consider Purple directly our customer. So uh, we will do exactly as uh, Purple instruct us to do just um, yeah I just wanted to communicate that uh, okay. on our side technically speaking uh, we can integrate uh, all of them right so it's not uh, technically an issue uh, only thing is uh, how much you know time and resources it will take on our side and how to organize it best uh, so everybody is satisfied so that's it All right. Nope. Uh, I have a question regarding the TR69 work. Um, what part is so so? So what is missing uh, to get a full uh, uh, TR69 stack with this data model and so on uh, when phase um, one is finished? So when you when you look at the uh, normal stock OpenWRT without uh, vendor modifications. <coughs> Um, I didn't understand to whom this question is directed. Uh, to you, Luca, or I think you are probably the one who can at best answer it. Or if it's, Eric knows uh, it better. I, like I said, uh, we didn't yet have a chance to start work integrated anybody's uh, project. So once we do that, we will know definitely more. Uh, what I can say now is uh, our experience with uh, free CWMP and uh, Rocket CWMP project, but I think that is not uh, of interest here specifically, but definitely this know-how that we have will be useful for uh, further work which we do in this area. So will there be will be the result at the end be a, a full stack which is integrated in open source? So like... There are some open source decks which are partly integrated in OpenWRT. Will it be something like this, just better integrated, or what, what will be the result at the end? So when you look at someone who's new to this and, uh, yeah. So my uh, wish in uh, all of this would be that uh, those inter interested parties who want to have their software integrated, uh, have their uh, package available in uh, make menu config. Uh, 
with like any other package we have uh, available today. So if somebody wants to use, let's say, soft at home stack, they will go select soft at home uh, PR069 client with its name, um, build an image and have this software ready to run upon device boot. Also, some people don't prefer to build images uh, from the start, so they uh, use uh, OPKG to install. So this is something that will be covered by uh, build boots and uh, OPKG for this specific piece of code will be available to download via the OPKG command. Uh, next thing, so once this initial step is working, having the uh, software running without crashes and uh, uh, integrated in ProdsD and all the other stuff. Next step is to uh, see how much of the backend uh, integration work is done, is easily portable to UCI, to other things that we have in OpenWRT. And uh, in this case, there is this uh, another dependency which was agreed on a face to face summit, which is that uh, Felix will propose an API for uh, back, so called backend API, which all of the implementations uh, will be available to use. So, in the I haven't had the chance today to read uh, the Felix's uh, proposal that Felix mentioned, but uh, to my understanding, uh, that's what Felix will do. Felix will propose an API, which all other parties will uh, take a look, uh, give feedback, and uh, based on that, we will have a backend API, which will be able to expand uh, to TR069 and other protocols if needed. Okay. But... Uh, like I said, this is a this is a work that is not uh, trivial and simple. This is something that will take time, given that uh, there are more than thousand parameters in TR one eighty one, more than thousand parameters in TR zero sixty nine, and uh, together with the companies who wish to have their uh, stack integrated uh, with our help, we will help, of course. Um, we will definitely define those parameters which are most important to them. For example, if uh, one company open sources their uh, stack and they don't have a phone port and then they don't need to um, integrate any of the SIP parameters, then this is something that will not be integrated and I think that's perfectly acceptable because uh, they don't have a use case for it. And if somebody else has a use case uh, for these uh, features, they will either implement it themselves or come to this uh, company who release source code and say, hey, I'm interested in your stack. Can you please add A, B, and C so I can use it as well? Okay. All right. I think that's a that's a good description, Luca. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, please, thank if you. if anybody has uh, any comments, uh, yeah, please uh, share. Uh, but I'm aware at this point that uh, descriptions may not be so specific. But uh, as soon as we have something concrete, uh, we'll be happy to share. Mm -hmm. All right, any other comments on this or questions? All right, um, the, uh, is Fel Felix isn't on this call, I don't believe. He wasn't able to make it. So I would have had him give any update, but since he's not here, we'll, we'll pass that. Uh, one other thing is we are looking to fund our second uh, set of projects. Uh, the announcement should go out, I think, next week, uh, depending on um, how bogged down I get in uh, OpenWRT Summit stuff. Um, but uh, then we're, we're going to ask for additional proposals. If, if you have projects that you think um, you would like members of the community to work on, um, 
you know, not not massive projects, but we're, we're talking uh, projects that probably could be done for, say, five to ten thousand dollars in that area, um, preferably maybe, you know, medium sized features, little features to open WRT or potentially even larger ones if, if they really make sense for people. Um, please email the list. Um, we're going, we want to have a list of suggested projects for people to propose. Um, the ones that have come up a couple times or, or that have been mentioned before is Docker support in OpenWRT. So you can run Docker images. Um, that one is of interest to, I believe, uh, a couple members of Purple. Um, I, I know Kathy had mentioned the idea of integrating a graphics stack, an open graphics stack into OpenWRT. Um, but if if you have others, uh, you, you know, is there anyone else who has anything else that they'd like to mention now that they, they can think of that would really jump out at them that should be integrated or be nice to have? Um, okay, so most of you know that uh, we did uh, LXC support back two years ago or something like that when we mainlined this support to to open WRT. And uh, last year, we started looking into Docker support. Uh, and basically, the problem back then was um, that it wasn't easy to compile um, Go-based applications, and Docker is written in Go. Um, so I was actually thinking of proposing this uh, by Sartura again. But I don't know if anybody has started working on it or not, and if they are interested in collaboration, um, I'd be happy to to I don't know do this jointly because this is also something that will, can possibly take considerable amount of time. So if anybody has maybe started looking into it or make some concrete steps, please um, let me know. All right. Uh, how, Kate, I, I could, if I remember correctly, uh, it, it's Lantique or slash Intel who's most interested in Docker support. Um, am I correct in that? And do you know if there's anything that's been started? Yes, we are interested in this. We haven't really started. I think could someone from Imagination, I think we also asked Imagination. I don't know if they started at least to get this running on MIPS platform. So someone should probably talk to them. I don't know to whom exactly there. I'll talk to Art. I'm. I'm. Sh okay. I, I, have, I think he. He probably was the one who who asked. Uh, just wanted to make sure on that. But, um, yeah, we'll we'll put you in in touch with them about that, uh, Luca. Okay. See and, where they, uh, they are. Mm -hmm. And also, I have one other point. So. Okay. Uh, okay so we as a company mostly do uh, projects around OpenWRT. Mm -hmm. And uh, when somebody joins a company, you know, OpenWRT, uh, it's not something that uh, you had opportunity to learn at your previous job. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you come to these new jobs with uh, all the skills uh, you need to have. So uh, teaching uh, new people, uh, stuff around OpenWRT, has proven to be a project of itself. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fact. Um, yes. What uh, we have been doing in the shadows, and uh, I can announce it, is that we have around 150 page uh, book, which uh, has, let's say, maybe 60 to 70 percent of the materials. Um, which, yeah, we've written here internally, which covers things from uh, handling uh, make files to working with uloop uh, to have some hello world examples to stuff like uh, how to connect the serial port, etc. So mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if other people on this call or maybe purple would find this interesting uh, to have. I think it's interesting. What, what do other people on this call think?
Well, I also find it interesting. So we often have, yeah, the documentation isn't so well because mm-hmm. nobody is really interested in writing documentation. Yes. How, uh, I guess, how do you, uh, how do folks at like ADB and, and well, Soft at Home, you're not using uh, OpenWRT right now, but I mean, how do you get people up to speed? Do you have things like that, or or do you find that people already know this? Uh, from ADB point of view, uh, it's always it's always tough to to find people that are already aware of the environment in which you you normally work, but. Uh, Open WRT is quite widely used, I would say, in Italy, also from some guys uh, with like to play at home with their own router, etc. So sometimes it happens to, to be in touch with someone that is using it, uh, but just from a very uh, in-house point of view, so no specific uh, uh, developments on it, etc. Apart from the lack of knowing Matteo Croce, that was with us for a couple of years, but that was once in a lifetime. And apart from that, uh, well, that's it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, um, yeah, then we can. I think that's. A, I, th- I think it's a cool idea. Um, so I think we. I think that's a good idea to to propose. And uh, I would I would encourage you to actually email the list, Luca, with actually both of those uh, proposals. Um, the the Docker one is actually already you know. Um, it's proposed, but mentioned that you're interested in. It's something that you're you've been looking at as well. Um, but yeah. Okay. Awesome. I think I think those are both really interesting projects. So. Anything else about funding OpenWRT projects that that folks want to talk about? All right. Uh, the uh, there's no regulatory update. Nothing new. Uh, still uh, kind of the uh, August and getting into the September vacation time for. FCC, so no, no new update really there still. Uh, OpenWRT Summit, uh, the accepted session proposals have been notified. Uh, if you're on your on this call and you and you submitted a session, you probably heard back from us. Um, there, I, almost all of the sessions were accepted. Um, the uh, we will get an announcement of who those are once we've. Uh, I would have to say probably next week, uh, early next week, to to uh, publicize who those are and so people know. But um, it's great sessions, great sessions. I'm I'm really happy with the with the breath. Um, it is not as um, I wouldn't say as as tightly focused on OpenWRT, like the the core of it. But it's very uh, it's very interesting on the breadth of, of things and a lot of things that are very relevant to to, to companies that use OpenWRT in the community. Um, so. And I think, uh, you, would you agree with me on that on that statement, Luca and and uh, Hauke? I think, yes. uh, yeah, topics are <clears throat> not only technical but also from uh, other areas surrounding the project and the community. So it should be very good. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, I, I think I think it'll be good. So uh, just uh, keep on the lookout for those those announcements and things. So. Uh, any questions on OpenWRT Summit? All right. Uh, Eric? Oh, yeah. Uh, what's, what's the deadline? When do you get um, back if people will really um, do their presentation? Or what's the, what's the, when will it be announced publicly? Which sessions? It'll be, will... it'll be, it'll be next week. Uh, okay. Early next week. Once I, I, I emailed all the the people who have been accepted i have to email the person who wasn't accepted and then i have to just uh finish the blog post which i'll either get done today or or monday oh okay just just post it so okay Um, yep that's it 
Um, all right. Anything else? Anyone has? About Open WRT Summit? Okay. Uh, the, this topic uh, that Wojtek and Pasquale want, really want to talk about, licensing Open WRT and Purple. Um, I think Wojtek started this, this discussion. Uh, would you like to give some background on, on kind of the topic? Yeah, the, the question came um, as we uh, decided uh, now it's official to uh, put our TR69 software in open source. Uh, what should be the right license, the uh, open source license that uh, to apply to it? So um, we exchanged a few emails with Luca uh, I, I also got some feedback from uh, Cesare uh, and Katie, and um, the status is that first of all, um, in the, uh, the there is a, a kind of licensing policy established by Purple that is that everything that is developed uh, in the Purple project should be under the um, ICE. ISS, ISC license. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, then the question was uh, whether it really applies to uh, also to open WRT or not. Okay, because if my uh, understanding is correct, and many many things in, in open WRT. Uh, are under uh, GPLv2, LGPLv2, uh, BSD, etc. Uh, so the question is, um, should we use um, I, I, uh, ISC everywhere uh, or not? Uh, how to deal with that? Because somewhere uh, the feedback from the OpenWRT community is of importance too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Uh, before I apply a, one license or, or another, I, I would like to have this discussion uh, to, to get some feedbacks about that. Well, I, I can just give the, the background on, on the on the purple, uh, the choice of the uh, of ISC. For ISC, um, that was one of the members of purple when we were getting started, they were uh, pretty strongly, they wanted a very permissive license. Um, part of the reason was they wanted they wanted any uh, code that was being uh, that Purple would release uh, to be available for use in things like BSD um, potentially. Uh, so it was of relevance to them that it be more permissive than the GPL because you can't use GPL stuff in BS in uh, in any of the BSDs. Um, that's the background there, and and to be to be clear, that that's really only the code that Purple creates uh, ourselves, uh, and or or you know we we contract with someone to create. Uh, certainly, a member of Purple can put it under any license they choose, um, but I will let uh, Luca and and Hauke uh, give their kind of their opinions on this, if they have any. Um, yeah. So when Wojtek. Uh approach me with this question i was like uh, thinking a bit uh, about it and at the end uh, i told him uh, with the license you are uh, also making uh, a statement mm -hmm. so um, if one chooses to use a gpl version 3 uh, which uh, to my understanding most of the companies uh, don't want to use because of some legal stuff of course right mm -hmm. uh, then you are making a statement that uh, okay i am open source but i'm not allowing any company to use it uh, then there is a classic called the uh, gpl version 2 and then there are more permissive ones uh, bsd ic etc um i'm to, when i consider uh, this uh, work, I see it as a uh, you know, matter. Okay, it will be running on OpenWRT and, and everything, but it is also an uh, isolated part of OpenWRT. And uh, my with my OpenWRT hat on, um, 
as long as the the license is uh, okay and the software uh, works, uh, I can use the software, and that's fine with me. Uh, so I communicated to to Wojtek, uh to check uh, what his uh, target audience would like to see from the from these licenses. So I don't know uh, what feedback was received. Uh, from purple side because I was counting that maybe uh, purple will have I don't know a better idea of uh, what companies would like to see okay there was this one company who preferred to have ISC but as, as, as uh, what is concerned open WRT uh, it can be integrated uh, with any license mm -hmm. uh, Right, okay, you will agree. Uh, yes, so um, the uh, it's no problem if it's GPL, um, V2, or if it's uh, ISC, it's no problem to integrate it in OpenWT also. As for a core part, it's also no problem. So I think where even some kernel code is licensed under the ISC license, which is in the mainline kernel, I think the Aferos Wi-Fi driver uses that license. Uh, so, for, from the from the um, legal point to integrate it into OpenWRT, there is no problem with with either license. Um, only if you take a special own created license, uh, that would be not so nice. Um, so um, yeah, then it depends on, like you said, uh, how you want. Like Luca already said, how you want to integrate. Uh, how do you want to um, involve the community, and uh, what do you think about others using your software? Like when you use the ISC license, someone else could use your software, extend it, um, and um, don't give the source code to anyone else. Um, with the GPL, that's harder to do such things. So we have that, that's the, the things. So at the end, I think it's, it's your decision um, uh, what license you should choose. So uh, yeah, if it's GPL v2 or ICS, I don't see the problem with both of them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, frankly speaking, when I asked the question, I didn't uh, know that there was this IP policy of uh, Purple saying that. Mm -hmm. It's uh, ISC and as ISC is uh, uh, generally compatible with, with any type of license, then if uh, everybody is fine with I ISC, uh, then there is no problem at all. But just after that, my question was whether uh, the um, uh, Barb, uh, Open WRT developers were or were of that, that whatever they do uh, in, for the Purple project has to be under this license. Uh, personally, I'm fine with that. Okay. I have so I have been uh, trying to communicate this uh, from the beginning. So TR069 is something that is not. Uh, of wide interest in the world. So it's not somebody comes and makes TR069 client for fun. This is something that uh, people uh, do because they have to do it. Otherwise, their customers will not buy their equipment because then yeah. they cannot manage it. Um, so with that state of mind, um, your target audience uh, is not actually, in my, from my point of view, uh, uh, a hacker community, it's more like uh, companies and uh, uh, ecosystem in this telecom area. Uh, and now, if I was releasing the, the code, so I would ask myself, okay, so am I actually okay with somebody taking my software, uh, modifying it, and putting it into his product and then selling it? Uh, as a solution, which if is a fully permissive license as uh, BSD is totally uh, acceptable. Uh, 
Um, I can I can share from my experience when I started uh, working on the free CWMP that was five or six uh, years ago. Uh, I deliberately put uh, GPL version free because of hey I wanted to be in the open, but I was aware that companies will use it. And when uh, there was a project opportunity and they communicated that they don't want to use GPL version 3, is it possible to switch to GPL version 2? Then, because of this project, because I was the only author, I just downgraded the license and there it is. Um, so it's... Uh, it's uh, I would, if, if possible, it would be uh, great if uh, Purple would be able to uh, reach out to operators. I, from my understanding, uh, is already uh, in progress, mm -hmm. and to think with them what is preferred license from their side, so it can be uh, communicated back to uh, Soft at Home, and uh, that way, I think Soft at Home. Uh, anybody else would get the, the right feedback uh, mm -hmm. how to approach this uh, legal matter and uh, this also like shows to operators that you are trying to do something and it's not like in theory so I think this is definitely good okay yeah I think that's a good idea I'll, I'll talk to Art about that he's mostly handling the, the operator contact I, it was soft at home and ADB have you had any feedback that you, you feel like operators have said no? I mean, I'm pretty sure operators have said, no, we don't want GPL v3. That was kind of, I, I assume that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, beyond that, I mean, do they have, have they shared opinions? Um, uh, beyond uh, excluding GPL v3, they don't care. But basically, you know, it's up to us and our case up to Subtetum to, to manage that. The, they want us to have a, a clear um, policy regarding everything that's about open source. But if uh, if there are no problems for us, they, they are fine with that. Okay. So, so uh, yeah. I, I know that I, personally, I think that we will not get an, any interesting feedback from operators. The only feedback okay. they will provide is about gplv3 <laughs> that, that, that that's all and we know that mm -hmm. okay so uh, no for, for me the question was much more internal about you know uh, our willingness what do you want to act you okay because i i see that's the, that that's fine as license uh, the only problem is that uh, uh, anybody can take it do whatever it wants and never um, contribute uh, uh, back. Okay, uh, so uh, that that's somewhere the um, the, the the question I, I had whether not only about the compatibility but between licenses but also about uh, whether there is a willingness to to require um, some feedbacks from the companies using. Uh, the software or not with ISC there will the, the, yep. the, the any feedback is purely optional okay with uh, GPL or LGPL uh, it's it's uh, much more mandatory uh, anybody can use it but uh, usually the, the any modification should be uh, delivered back to the community so even not mm -hmm. coming to the user in fact yep uh, so it's more complex yeah. than that. Uh, but now, as I understand that uh, we have the existing purple policy, and that's it. Hi. Yeah. Yeah, Pasquale, Pasquale here. So uh, first of all, I fully you know, agree on, on the sense that, OK, let's try absolutely to avoid to use the GPL v3. That's, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I don't have any issue in you know following the ISC policy and licensing scheme for whatever is uh, developed under the Purple Foundation. So Purple mm -hmm. is found in certain projects. While a bit different is instead to try to define which is the license scheme that our stack that we are going to deliver to the open community have to follow. 
this is something a bit different, of course, right? So mm -hmm. just to be, uh, you know, concrete, if we are founding product for TR069 integration, whatever will be the outcome from Luca, Felix and all the other guys will follow under the IEC. That's fine, no problem. Mm -hmm. While I cannot, you know, uh, approve at least up to now the fact that uh, ADB software delivery will, will uh, you know, follow under the same license scheme. Instead, we may prefer to still use the GPL v2. To me, that seems perfectly reasonable. And I think I and thank you for uh, making that delineation very clear that I mean, when we when we say purple, it's it's what purple is funding. It's um, if you the the stacks that that both ADB and uh, soft at home are graciously providing to the open source community. Uh, those licenses are are really up to you, um, and I can totally see from your point of view GPL v two that it makes a lot of sense. Um, and if you're if you feel that it makes sense for your company, then I think that's a perfectly reasonable choice. Um, and really, like Lucas and Felix's work under the ISC as a as a purple policy. Um, that's that's not a problem to to have have them under separate licenses like that since the ISC is totally compatible with the GPL and if they have to be linked then it's totally compatible and that's not an issue. Um, so yeah, that, that's I, fine. I, I wanted absolutely. just to, you know, to to clarify for avoiding any mis misunderstanding in the future. That's why. Absolutely. Thank you, Pascal. Do you do you mean GPL v two or uh, LGPL? Well, uh, I. I will tend to use the GPL instead, but uh, let me say that we can, uh, you know, further dig into and have a further discussion yeah. on it. No problem for this. Yeah. Of course, for sure, I tend to, you know, to say that we could not or cannot accept the ISC concerning that mm -hmm. the, the usage of GPL or LGPL. We can further discuss on it. No problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see. Yeah, but I fully agree that the, the, the big question, the, my understanding of what Pascal said is that they would like to, to get some, um, if there are, somebody uses their stack uh, and make some improvements, uh, they, they want to have those improvements uh, uh, provided back to the open source. Uh, uh, that, that's it. I agree that it's a good idea. Yep. Yeah, that's the philosophy of the open source, of course. So the, the, the mm -hmm. fact that, you know, you can maybe try to build something, but then you are asking for the contribution of, uh, you know, 100 or even more of additional people in order to change, modify, improve, and answer, whatever. That's the philosophy. Yep. I, I think that's a yeah. great idea. I think it makes perfect sense. So uh, what is there anything that... that um... You know, to... I have just one point. It's a purely legal mm -hmm. because uh, if I'm not wrong, if if we have something, uh, a software stack that is under GPL or LGPL, okay, and if you modify the software, then you have to. Um, to agree that what you did is under the same license mm -hmm. between GPL or LGPL, okay? Now, if the modification is done uh, by a purple project, uh, in this case, this modification will not be ISC. I don't know whether it's clear for everybody or not. That, um, that is clear well, to me. That, that yeah. is, I, I won't, I mean, I guess I can't formally speak, but every discussion I've ever had, everyone has been of the opinion that that's not a problem because in effect, the modification itself was made under the ISC, but when it gets integrated, it then becomes GPL, but the original yeah. modification yeah, was made yeah. ISC, so exactly. it's perfectly fine. That okay. we, we have yeah. never, I've never heard anyone in purple express that being a concern. But I mean, I, I won't speak for purple because I'm not the one who makes that decision. So, yeah, okay. But I, I can I can clarify with art, but I would suspect it's not an issue. And I've never foreseen it being one. 
usually how it works in the open source communities is is if a project has a specific uh, license whichever and you contribute to to that project by a source code change or whatever is that uh, you accept the existing license and accept yeah. that your uh, changes will go in this project uh, and will have this license mm. um, what i've seen uh, that some projects do uh, for example if you want to make a pull request on some github uh, project uh, before you are allowed to make a pull request they uh, make you specifically say by doing this change i accept that my changes would get integrated, would not get integrated, and if they do, it will be under this and this license. And if you don't click yes, uh, you cannot like make a pull request. Yeah. So, Eric, ju just check that with us. I will absolutely. You know, yes. uh, I would say that from the purely legal point of view, this modification is done from the start under another license than ICS, if it's a modification of something that is existing with another license. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think there will be no problem with that. It's just I, a clarification, yeah. okay? <laughs> it's good, uh, yeah, I agree. It's good to get it in writing. I, I Again, I, I don't foresee a problem, and but I will, I will do that with Art. I'll talk to Art about that. All right. Is there any other follow-up that, that anyone wants beyond that? Um, I have one topic okay. that just came to mind, and that okay. is uh, back again to TR069, and that is, um, okay, so we will soon receive the code and start working. Uh, anybody has access to some ACS server we can use? I have talked with some people, I can talk with them again, uh, who have access, um, just bringing this question up so we can test actually the software uh, and the integration and everything we don't have one i mean does does anyone else have one that's available hi pasquale here so uh, you know we we uh, as a hdb as a you know a product that is called pmp management platform so that is basically an ACS is a is a you know real infield product that we are selling and we have infield in a couple of operators uh, I, I will i need to of course to double check internally if we can grant a remote access for you know maybe luca or felix mm -hmm. uh, in order for them to you know make uh, their uh, analysis uh, their troubleshoot in the bug and development uh, I will take uh, an action in order to double check it. All right, that's that's great. Uh, at separate from site, we we don't have any solution. Our own solution, I mean, for for the ACS. So we are always dealing with some partners for that. So mm -hmm. uh, we cannot provide that. But if my uh, memory is correct, there are some. Uh, quite good open source ACSs too. Um, they are not so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the difference, Wojtek, that's the difference exactly between maybe something that is, you know, career grade and something else that is not instead. <laughs> that's why I, I, I was proposing uh, I, it. So. I, I, suppose, I, I suppose, but I what i also know is that even you know a very well-known commercial tr69 acs uh, have some specific way of doing things uh, so globally uh, you can never guarantee that everything will work fine it's always a question of what is the precise acs you, you take so uh, the more you use of them, the better it is, uh, and that's it. Yeah, that's why we have a... Everybody has learned their, their lesson integrating uh, their own stack, and uh, they 
don't want to switch to anything else because they know there is this uh, field proven, right? Mm -hmm. um, my, my, my remark was rather about, you know, if we try to make some automatic tests, etc., then you have some open source stuff that could be uh, easily uh, adapted uh, to do that. So uh, even if they are not uh, maybe the, the best ACSs, uh, they can allow to, to, to develop some automatic tests. I think it's a cool idea. I, I I wonder how much how much work it would be. Um, but, um, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So it would be nice that it works quickly, but uh, based on our experience, um, it's it's not going to be. <laughs> so I'd rather I'd rather that we spend uh, time on doing something. Uh, beneficial long term rather than uh, try to fix some open source ACS, which is a questionable uh, quality. Maybe as a um, we can look at that as as when we're um, looking for the project ideas for the for other projects to fund. Yep. One of them could be, you know, developing at the very least some like say board farm tests for uh, for an open source ACS or things like that. Uh, particularly um just um, an idea yeah if if you go back and uh, when felix and i had a joint presentation uh at one of the last slides this is what i uh, yep. proposed so yeah maybe at some future time but uh, in any case uh for this initial step uh, we will manage and uh, test mm -hmm. uh, somehow the the integration Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, okay. Of course, absolutely. All right. Uh, so we are we are about at at the end of our time. So I, I don't want to keep anyone longer. Is there anything that that we need to discuss now? All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming. A uh, great meeting. Uh, we will meet again uh, next Thursday uh, at our normal time, and uh, we will uh, see everyone then. Thanks everyone. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Shut up.